Here we need to check for the Heisenberg principles for the wave function in video number 20. This is the solution for the Dirac delta function for the Schrodinger equation. So let's get started. So first we need to calculate the expectation value of x squared, right? So let's rewrite this psi function as in two terms. Let's put the constant outside, m times alpha divided by h bar squared. And here we're going to put e to the minus m times alpha times x divided by h bar square. And that's if x is greater than or equal to 0. And this is e to the minus, I mean to the positive m times alpha times x divided by h bar square. And that's if x is, great, is less than or equal to 0. All right. So first thing first, we have to calculate the expectation value of x squared. So here we have x squared. And again, we have to sandwich this x squared between psi star psi. And since x squared is just a multiplication operator, we can just put it outside like this x squared times psi star psi dx. And that's the same as 2 times m times alpha divided by h bar square times the integral from 0 to infinity times x square times e to the minus 2 m uh, alpha x over h bar square dx right so this is equal to 2 times m times alpha divided by h bar square times 2 times h bar square divided by 2 m alpha to the third. So let's simplify this a little bit further. This is h bar to the fourth divided by 2 times m square alpha square and this is the final answer for the expectation value of x in other words this is the error in the position measurement sigma x is equal to h bar square divided by the square root of 2 times m times alpha here we go. So now, uh, now we have to find the expectation value of uh, p squared, right? So first we have to find the first derivative of psi with respect to x. So d psi dx it is going to be equal to, this is a lot easier doing it this way so we don't make any mistakes, right? Because if you remember the expectation value of p, if you remember the p operator has a second derivative, right? And it has to be sandwiched between psi star psi. So before you go there, let's calculate the first derivative and the second derivative so we don't make any errors. So let's erase that. Okay, so the first derivative is square root of m times alpha divided by h bar times minus m a divided by h bar square times e to the minus m alpha x over h bar square and that's if x is greater than or equal to zero the other scenario is mass times alpha divided by h bar square times e to the m alpha x over h bar square and that's if x is less than or equal to zero. So let's uh, let's simplify this a little bit further. Um, so let's see. This is going to be equal to square root of m times alpha divided by h bar to the third times uh, minus theta of x e to the minus m 
alpha x over h bar square plus theta of minus x times e to the m alpha x over h bar square and this theta is our uh, our function from the problem before this one so in the previous video so we define this theta over there as a step function okay so the second derivative of psi with respect to x is equal to square root of m times alpha over h bar to the third power times minus it's a delta function right so minus this delta because we proved in the previous video that's the derivative of yeah, this step function theta of x is indeed the delta function it's gonna make things a lot easier so times e to the minus m alpha x divided by h bar square plus m times alpha over h bar square times theta of x times e to the minus m alpha x over h bar square minus remember this we are taking one derivative of the first derivative which means the second derivative and here we have to do the product rule right so it's going to be the derivative of the first times the second and then the derivative of the second times the first and we have to do it the same here so we we actually have four terms so this is minus yeah our delta function of negative x e to the m alpha x over h bar square and finally the last term I'm gonna put it right over here plus m times alpha over h bar square times theta of minus x times e to the m alpha x over h bar square so let's simplify a little bit further so after doing a lot of algebra we have the square root of m times alpha divided by h bar to the third power times 2 minus 2 times our delta function plus m times alpha divided by h bar square times e to the minus m alpha absolute value of x over h bar square there you have it this is our second derivative of psi so now we have yeah in the last step we use this thing called uh, this trick is you know that this that uh, delta of minus x is indeed equal delta of x okay so this is from the earlier video we used so if we have f of x times delta of x this is going to equal to f of 0 times delta of x right this is the same thing and if we have theta of minus x plus theta of x this is going to be equal to 1 okay and since yeah d theta d psi d dx is an odd function okay as an odd it's an odd function then the expectation value of p is equal to 0 also the same thing goes that the expectation value of x is also the zero that's because uh, it's also odd int integral right 
so it's an odd interpan so now yeah we can calculate the expectation value of p p square this is going to equal to h bar square times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of psi times d psi dx square dx if you say why not psi star it's the same thing our psi here is, here is, a, is a real function it's not a complex so this is going to equal to minus h bar square times square root of m times alpha divided by h bar times times the square root of m times alpha divided by h bar to the third power times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the minus m times alpha times absolute value of x over h bar square times let's put here minus 2 delta of x is our delta function plus m times alpha divided by h bar square Oop. times e to the let's, let's put it here times e to the minus m times alpha times the square root of yeah, times the absolute value of x over h bar square dx close brackets dx okay so let's put it here let's simplify a little bit further so this is going to be equal to m times alpha divided by h bar square times 2 minus 2 times m times alpha divided by h bar square times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus 2 m alpha x over h bar square dx there's a lot of math involved between step this step step number two and step number three so if you want to practice your algebra, just go ahead and do that. So this is, let's simplify a little bit further. So this is equal to 2 times mass times alpha divided by h bar square times 1 minus m times alpha divided by h bar square times h bar square divided by 2m times alpha. And if you simplify this, you get mass times alpha, which is joules over length, right? Divide by h bar, which is joules second square. There you have it. So this is the expectation value of P. So now we have sigma P is equal to mass times alpha over h bar. And sigma x, we have it from earlier. What is it? Let me find it. Sigma x equal to h bar squared divided by square root of 2 times mass times alpha. So now, finally, if we do the Heisenberg principle, we have sigma x times sigma p. This should be should be this is what the heisenberg principle less than h bar over 2 so this should be less than or equal to h bar over 2 for our problem if we multiply these two we get h bar square over square root of m times i mean square root of 2 times m times alpha times m times alpha over h bar which is equal to square root of 2 times h bar over 2 
which is indeed greater than h bar over 2 because what's the square root of 2 it's 1.14 1 something like that it's greater than 1 so there you have it so this the the Heisenberg principle is true for the solution for our Dirac delta function for the Heisenberg, I mean for the Schrodinger equation.